Okay, so my talk uh, today is based about whatever you're talking to you about. Um, how to navigate your way into the games industry. Uh, just some background on myself. My name is Greg Scheib. Uh Some AAA experience. I've shipped five titles. Uh, the last title I worked on was Model of Fire 3. Um, if you played, anyone played that game? Hopefully, yes. Um, uh, if you played the plane crash level, uh, or you played the Samsung level, that was my team that worked on that. So, um, in August, I left uh, AAA to start my own independent studio uh, because I, to me, I kind of saw the writing on the wall. Um, that I hope I don't crush in one soul. Uh, talking about that here, but. Uh, to me, uh, games right now is going through a huge change. Uh, and you guys probably heard that a little bit earlier. Um, from, from what we used to understand as this publisher AAA model, uh, to more of a fast-paced, quick, uh, uh, oh, I would say mobile world, but small game. And, it, and, and it's not really a seismic change. To me, what basically happened is if you came to the original console generation of Nintendo, like if you, anyone here own a Nintendo 64 or yes, there's hope. Um, right, Th those games weren't about visual fidelity, right? They weren't about, you know, because you couldn't do it then. Um, but it was about gameplay, right? It was about sitting down, uh, sometimes with, with three other people on your couch and playing a game, and, and that's what, what it was about. And somehow in the last 10 years, it's gone from, from that to money. Uh, and and, and uh, PC demos, like er early in the 90s when PCs were first like, kicking out and really starting to kick ass graphically. Oh, I'm going to say that now. But, okay, if you're using a PC in the 90s, uh, it really seemed like you would go to these computer shows and they would have like these uh, hummingbird demos in 3D. And it was like the greatest thing ever, which if you look at them now, they're totally shitty. But, um, but things started going more towards that visual fidelity realm. Like, how real can we push this? How how far can we push things down this reality track? And so we're kind of in that now. Uh, and even now you're seeing this push for the, the next console generation. But uh, I'm an animator by trade. Um, that's what my degree is in. And in animation, you learn that the more you push towards reality, the more difficult it is to really pull off that visibility. Because your mind, basically, if I draw a circle, Put a smiley face in it, right? Your mind believes that that's you know, that's a smiley person. Uh, and if I have a fully rendered character with uh, teeth and blood in their gums, uh, you almost believe it, but then your mind starts to tell you, like, whoa, something messed up here. Like that guy is totally an alien. Uh, you know, the guy sitting next to you was was modeled and rendered. The way he acts, the way he emotes, the way he changes. We're close. Like who played LA Confidential? In? Okay, it didn't do that good. But um, so they had a face scan technology uh, in that basically they were they were scanning faces at a high frame rate and then putting that into the game. Um, and so they're like, this is going to revolutionize gameplay. Okay, well the faces look pretty cool, right? But the game tanked, right? Because it was a shitty game. Uh, sorry, I worked on that game. You know, there was a lot of good things about that game. Um, I'm just saying from the perspective of where I'm coming from. So. So I was in the industry, I'm at the top of, you know, things are kicking off, you know, I was, was pretty high in making the decisions for, for what happens in, in, in that game. And you, you start to have different feelings when you get to the other side. So uh, my talk uh, is kind of about surviving either way, in indie or AAA, but uh, I hope it's not too biased towards indie because uh, I've seen the AAA and, and it's, hey, it's great to work in the industry but you know it's, it's not everything even the last panel um, you know it's like I feel a little bit guilty telling you guys like hey here's, here's how you break into AAA like you don't really break into shit anymore just to be honest with you uh, and, and what you guys are doing out there now is probably more on the cusp of what's coming next than, than anything that we're making now right because if we came through a different school right it was a different industry now how many people in here use Twitter if you ask people in my generation, like, not very many people are going to raise their hand. Uh, it's because it's you guys think differently, right? It's a different generation. It's a different different concept. So a lot of times we'll get up here and we'll tell you, you know, it's like I went to GEC this year and it was kind of a big thing there. It's like, 
you can get up here and they talk to you about how to make games and, and what the answers are. Like, here's 10 steps for how you become a game developer. Uh, but it's really like our 10 steps. Like, these are the 10 steps that I followed. You, you won't have that same, that same situation. So, my talk is basically going to show you the things that I learned that I think are intrinsic to that. Um, and really, when I got done writing this presentation, this is really like how to take asset anything to do in your life. Um, so it doesn't necessarily apply to game development, but it, it definitely has um, some concepts there. Um, right, so my talk. Everybody saw that? Okay, so we're already late, you know, getting into this uh, thing of difficulty. There's a ton of shit in this presentation that you know, they tell you, like, ah, 10 slides in an hour. There's no way. Uh, I have a lot of things that I want to tell you about, so this is probably going to like blow your face off. So, if you've ever played God of War, sorry, keep trying to do that. So, um, like you played God of War for four hours, and it's like you got the shit kicked out of you, um, and that's kind of what this presentation. Is. So, um, so don't worry about writing stuff down if you're like a, a, one of those guys like me that has to record everything. Um, there's a link at the end that tells you how to download all the notes and, and uh, everything for it. So just sit back and have your face on. Um, uh, so yeah, where are we as an industry right now? Um, you know, right now gamers, if you're a gamer, this is an awesome time for you, right? There's tons of titles, there's, you know, games are getting super cheap now. You have a phone in your pocket that's, you know, probably more powerful than most computers. Um, you have an access to game as your culture, like it, it is something that has been there. Like it, it's actually now starting to be accepted as like, hey, I want to be a game developer. It's like, oh, that's very nice. Um, sometimes, um, not with everyone. Um, so there's, 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 uh, oh yeah, there's, uh, uh, the VR glasses, um, uh, yes, which is going to change everything, so, uh, get one of those if you can. But, but, but as a gamer, people are super excited, right? It's like, this is the best time in the industry ever. But on the other side, uh, you actually have the industry that's, that's sitting there thinking, okay, next console generation is coming out. How are we going to cover those dev costs? Uh, have you seen the Unreal 4 demo? You realize it's a demo. Can you imagine making a game that looks like that, how long that's going to take? Already games are costing, what, $60 uh, at retail. So you're telling me we're going to be able to spend twice the resources to get it done in the same amount of time. Where is that cost going to go, right? So publishers are concerned about that. Uh, jobs in the industry, you guys know because probably a lot of you are trying to get them right now. Uh, last year, I think it was 55 studios closed or reported significant layoffs. Um, you know, so right now, the job situation kind of sucks, but, so people in the industry are thinking like, oh my gosh, are we going to keep our job? Like, this is going to pretty sweet gig. Uh, is it going away? Uh, and indies, right? So it's like rise of the indie. I don't know if you guys uh, saw the Game Developer Awards this year, but um, FTL won a uh, Game Developer Award, right? A game kicks ass, okay, I can play the play FTL. Um, so, but, you know, so it means like, oh, it's finally being accepted, right? These small games are, you know, competing with the Call of Duty's and all of this. Uh, but at the same time, like, everyone is creating a game now, right? You ask any high school kid what they want to do, create a game, right? Somebody's got to be a doctor, you know? Somebody has to do that. Um, so what that's causing for indies now is, uh, when you look at releasing a game, you know, sure you guys can make a game in two weeks or three weeks, right? But it's kind of pretty crappy. Um, and so what you see on the Apple Store is like everyone's like, ah, I can make a million dollars on the Apple Store and make a game. Uh, and so there's this glut of crap out there. So uh, even, you know, as you're working towards, you know, a year on your title or longer, you still compete in that same space, right? How many, like 255 games uh, get published a day on the App Store? Um, how do you compete with that, right? So. Uh, so gamers are happy. Indies, uh, you know, a little bit pensive right now. Sorry, I have to go to my notes and do these things. Okay, so what am I going to talk about? How how to be successful, right? Um, and, and so these are the kind of steps that I'm going to go about how how to explain it. This really do shit. Uh, just ignore that part. <laughs> okay, first of all, let's talk about the definition of success. So. If you ask anyone, uh, what is it going to take to be successful? It's a very personal definition, right? And it should be because you're like, okay, well, success to me is about achieving my goals, right? So I can't really say, okay, let me teach you all about how to be successful to my goals. Um, so I wanted to go with the generic definition, right? Uh, accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. And why this is important uh, is so that you, you want to have success, you must first have an aim or a purpose, 
right? A lot of people get into the game industry because it's something they love to do. You ask anybody, it's like, oh, why do you, why do, you do this? It's like, oh, I love games. Okay, well, that lasts all of about a year in the industry. Um, so, so the first thing that I want you to think about is, <coughs> sorry, it's the weirdest mic ever. Um, success, right? That's what we're talking about. So step one is know your destination. Know what you want to do, right? Uh, what kind of games do you want to make? You know, and why? You know, is it because you like to play games? Because that's a really poor excuse. Because it's kind of like saying uh, baking a cake is the same thing as eating a cake. Uh, and it's not. It's not nowhere even close to the experience of that. You know, most of the time you get into the industry and you don't play games anymore. Uh, and, and it's quite a brutal, brutal industry, right? Five years, I think, is the average work time from where you enter the industry and you're totally burnt out. Uh, and I think the answer to that lies a lot in this question. Is people don't really know what they want to do. It's like, oh, I'll make anything. I'll, I'll take any job. Uh, just hire me, please. Uh, and the industry sees that too, right? Uh, the panel, they know. It's cheap labor, right? So it's like, hey, I'm not going to pay that senior guy. I'm going to hire three people that don't care. Uh, and so what you get is this kind of like, hey, welcome to the games industry. Here's a t-shirt with a logo on it. Hey, we have free soda. Have some free soda. Uh, free cereal on Fridays, you know, and 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 as a young adult, you're like, this is the greatest thing ever. I, you know, we have beer on Fridays, which that's pretty awesome. I'll admit. Um, but you have to understand that it's like all that can get in the way of, of, of what you want to do, and you're quickly shoved over into this. Again, sorry if this sounds negative. Uh, you're shoved over into your team. You're shipped off, and then you start creating production assets, right? Uh, and if you don't know where you're going or know why you're doing what you're doing, uh, you're going to get lost. So wh when I say destination, it's really I mean a goal. But goals, like I don't know, I'm just one of those people. That's like eight times someone says, "What are your goals?" I don't, I don't know what the hell that means. Um, but when you say it as a destination, it's like you're always going somewhere, right? Unless you're dead, uh, you're always going towards something or away from something. But you're always making a motion or a movement. So. If you know where you're going, you know where you want to go, or at least have a rough idea of where you want to go, uh, you can track that, right? If you have a goal, you know, like, am I making progress towards um, where I want to go? Uh, how do I make these tough decisions? You know, it's like, uh, do I go work for Bioshock? You know, do I move to Seattle and, and have this impact and pay all this money? Do I go to GDC and, and really take it, you know, this year so that I can succeed next year? Um, and there's another reason too, right? Uh, so like I said, this industry is really brutal. So when you're crunching after two years, all the, all the soda's worn off and your t-shirt is shitty and has holes in it, um, you're gonna be in like this knee deep in like piss, blood, uh, vomit, puke of development, right? It's like everyone is burnt out. Everyone, uh, you know, you've got eight more months of crunch until you get this thing out the door. And you need to know why you're doing this. Right? Because those are the people that are going to stand up and say, hey, let's get this finished, let's work through this. Um, this, this, this feature is super important that we get in the game. Because that's what's really going to matter. You, you can't lose track of what you're doing um, in these machines, like, uh, of, of what, where you want to go. So if, if you're at a point now where you're a student, like I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do when I was a student, um, you need to answer this question. Right? Why do you want to make games? Uh, and understand that, like, have you made a game before? Do you know what it's like to make a game? Uh, it's not really a whole lot of fun. Uh, there's a ton of crap that you have to get to. Like, if you're working through design, you're trying to bust through that. Uh, you have to know what you love about that. Like, it's almost like torture. Uh, but if you love it and you know that it's for you, uh, you're going to love it. Like, even sometimes when you're it's late at night and you've been crunching for four months and your whole team is there and it's like 12, 30, like, you have the best time. That's like, that's like the greatest time. If those people know why they're there. Uh, if they don't, then it can totally really suck for you. So first one is learning your destination. Second one, know the best route. Uh, so once you know where you want to go, right, you need to figure out how do you get from where you are now to there. Common sense, right? Uh, so let's look at a map, right? So um, these are kind of the options of what you can do. There's a, there's a ton of different roles. You know, it's not just AAA. It's not just indie. You know, there's some guys here uh, from the UW, with the education, uh, games for education, that, you know, they're kicking off something there. Uh, you know, you could be a hobbyist, you could be a teacher, you could be, you know, this huge unmapped region down there at the bottom, uh, that's like Oculus Land. Uh, 
right? Um, there's all these different things that you can go into. Like the games are at such a point of infancy right now that you really need to make sure that you're thinking about all these things and not just like, what's the cookie cutter two things that I can go into and do now? Because it's changing. That's why the industry is changing so fast. Uh, mobile, you can pick out games super fast. You know, kind of, hey, play this on your phone. Download it through the air. You know, it's like, uh, those are new things that didn't exist before. So you, you've got to really look and know, like, what, what is this route? How, how do I get from where I am now to where I'm going? And who's done it? Like, find someone who's done it. Don't just, like, uh, guess that your professor is going to teach you that, right? Go call Britain Software and ask them, like, hey, I want to be a modeler. Good. Go there. Go there for a day. See if you can stalk that guy for a week. Uh, because what that's going to do is it's going to save you money and it's going to save you time and it's going to get you where you want to go. But you need to know it. You can't just walk in and say, yeah, I don't know where animation and I'd like to sit in your desk for a week. And, yeah, it's like, no, I don't have time for that. Um, but if you're like, hey, here's my reel. I know what I want to do. I want to see if this is for me. That's going to give you the best you know, concept of how to get there. So find someone that knows the route, right? So find someone that's been there and back. Uh, you know those old crusty people? Um, those developers that can tell you, like, ah, don't worry about this. Don't, don't put this in your video. Uh, you know, that, that's what you really need to be looking for. Uh, so my experience is really in two realms. Like, I, I worked in the AAA industry, uh, and then since August of last year, uh, I've been working in uh, my own studio. So I work out of my basement. Um, it's awesome, but it's, it's crazy. Um, so I have this kind of unique perspective that I kind of wanted to share. Um, so there's other talks going on that will cover some of these other sections, these, these other routes, so I'm just going to kind of go through uh, the two that I've taken um, very quickly. So uh, as you pick, you know, this is kind of like trying to see the view of maybe which one of these could be right for you. Uh, so the routes are similar, right, between the two. Your job is to create entertainment, which don't underestimate that. This is one of the most impossible industries to get into and really understand what you're doing because you know, people say games are an art. No, games aren't art. Games are like a collection of arts. You know, programming is an art. Art is an art. Huh. Uh, design is an incredible art. And every one of these takes years to master. Uh, and so that's why you don't see a whole lot of new and innovative games because it's really difficult. So uh, no matter which path you go to, that's your job. Your job is to create an entertaining experience for someone. High stress, very competitive. Uh, the same roles pretty much you know, cover indie, you know, so, uh, it's more about how many of those roles you juggle yourself. So like um, every one of those roles in my studio um, versus like if you go to another studio, you're going to be very special. Uh, the outer ring is kind of the most interesting for me because this is what's really starting to change. Uh, and so distribution like Steam, you're seeing FTL on the same front page as say a lot of so, so these things are starting to merge where it's not just, hey, this is that little guy in the basement. It's like, yeah, that guy's kicking ass. You know, it's like, look at what Notch did. Granted, that's a very niche case. Um, but, and that guy's a lot of money. Um, so the market, the market is the same. You guys are playing indie games, or oh, uh, you're playing AAA games. You have a limited amount of time. Uh, but it's the same market. Everyone is trying to market to you. Like, hey, I'm trying to get on your Twitter. I'm trying to find some way to get you to access my game. Um, and I don't have the billion dollar budget that Call of Duty has, right? Um, and project duration. Some people underestimate this, but you're actually going to be spending probably a year to four years on your project, um, depending on what your budget is. Uh, and if it's a school project or something that you need to kick out the door. But it's, it's pretty much the same for AAA. There's a certain uh, limited time that you can predict, like, uh, who knows what games are going to be like in four years. So if that game takes you four years, you're kind of in trouble. Um, so, so there's this like limited window of what you can uh, hit. So you, you know, but they're pretty much the same, regardless of who you are. Uh, but the vessels are different, so it's a different ship. Uh, so again, roles that you cover, how much creative control you want to have, uh, what are your motivations? Are you doing this for the art of games or are you doing it for money? Or is someone who you're working for doing it for money? And they only play games. Um, depth of your skill set. This is really important about covering uh, compensation. Do you want to get paid or do you want to not get paid? Um, project scope. What can you do? You can make Call of Duty work in Saturdays uh, every third day with two of your buddies. Uh, it will take you like 55 years. Um, so project scope really matters. Marketing budget, cover that, the number of staff you work with, uh, and then risk ownership, who owns that? Is it someone else we don't know, a banker? Is it you? Is 
Is it your mom? Where are you funding your games? So here's the major difference. And there's one slide that really communicates the difference between the two. This is it, right? In AAA, uh, a lot of people go into games thinking like, oh yeah, I'm going to make games and it's going to be great. Okay, well, you're the camera, right? Uh, and where you work is the lens. So if you work in AAA, this, these pictures on the right are both taken from the same place with, with two different lenses. One's a 24 millimeter lens and one's a 2400 millimeter lens. So if you're in AAA, you're going to be on the top, right? You're going to be the guy that's modeling that crane for three months to make sure that everything in that crane looks fantastic, right? And it could be a park bench. You're spending two months making that the best end park bench and ZBrush and normal maps and all this crazy stuff ever, right? And the gamer is going to walk right past it. Uh, but there's that one chance that they could look down and say, oh yeah, man, that's a nice park bench. <laughs> Especially with the Oculus, right? It's like, oh my god. Um, and then if you're in the indie, it's, it's much different, right? You have the whole landscape that you have to cover. And it's much more about the experience and the aesthetic of what you're trying to feel. And a lot of times, like, uh, the controls could be on, but the visuals, you know, could be crappy, right? If uh, if I'm in Call of Duty and I have a, a shotgun, right, I'm going to scan that thing, I'm going to model the crap out of it. If I'm in Indy, I draw like a stick in pixel art, and you're like, that's a shotgun. I'm, okay, I believe it. Um, <laughs> so you can't get caught in the in the minutia, right? It's like you have to see what the big picture is. Um, and, and that's really inspiring as a game developer because that's, when you're a creative person, like you want to control what that voice is saying. You want to have control over uh, what that gamer is feeling when they're playing the game. And the difference between that and making sure that you're an educator or you're a student going into the industry, know what you want to do. Like, it's cool if you want to be a model. Like you may want to make the best park benches ever, and your pet, you know, your portfolio. Anytime someone needs park benches, bam, you are the guy. Um, and then maybe AAA is better. So. Let's look at it a little more closely and break down you know, some things. So when I talk about AAA, uh, the, the meaning of AAA has kind of been lost like, in the industry. But today it stands kind of normal, like the same thing that a credit rating stands for. Like AAA, top quality, nothing but the finest. Uh, and, and that's actually crap because it really doesn't, doesn't mean that. But the idea is that you throw a bunch of money, you throw a bunch of people, it should be talented, right? It should be fantastic. If you have 300 people making a game, Everything in that game should be amazing, but it, it doesn't scale that way, right? It's the same challenge if you're in the basement or you have 300 people. You have to make an uh, exciting experience. So when I talk about AAA, I mean these big top names, Blizzard, 343, Irrational, Epic. They're making these games that you play on your console. The major difference is there's big financing and big marketing budgets behind this, and they only compete in certain markets because they know they can charge $60 for a game so in order to get you to pay $60, this game has to be of this quality. Because they, if they were charging a dollar for the game, they, they can't support all these people, right? So uh, they just kind of, you know, they have to push for this. It's like this, the, the, the machine has basically eaten itself and it has to keep going. Uh, the other thing that you have that you don't have in any is publishers, right? They pull the string. They, they decide what the marketing mode is going to be. They decide how your game is going to be pitched. Uh, they decide if you're going to lay off 60 people once you finish this game. Um, and so there's kind of like this hidden thing that even if you kick ass and you do a good job, there's business people always watching the bottom line, right? And there's investors behind that. So, you know, it's kind of this ugly underbelly. But there are positives, right? Uh, working in the AAA industry, you get benefits, like you get sick or you have a family. Uh, consistent pay, like you know, Friday your paycheck won't bounce. Uh, that you're going to get paid, and that's pretty important, like right? getting paid. Uh, you get blockbuster titles and credits, right? That is uh, very important in the AAA industry because once you have a couple of titles under your belt, you can pretty much go where you want to go. That's like your are uh, in the system. Uh, again, deep skill development. You're going to have people that you can learn from. There'll be people in there that, you know, you'll have a department of modelers that's probably six people deep, and they'll all have a different skill set that they do. And you can learn from all of that, right? You can build from that. And maybe, maybe you didn't go to the best modeling school, uh, and you worked really hard, and you got your portfolio up and got in. You can learn from those guys and, and, and their contacts to other contacts. So it's kind of like this spider web of effect. Uh, and then it gives you some perspective. If you've never been in the industry before, uh, perspective is an important thing to get. You know, uh, people will tell you, like, hey, don't waste your time on that. Or you know, maybe they're overly disgruntled and don't listen to them. 
Um, so negatives. You produce things, not a game. Right? That was a, a big shock for me. Like you have ownership of your things. Like yeah, I was in charge of animation and we ran the touch studio and all that. Like, and you could see your work in the game, but you didn't really make the game. And even your creative input to that, you're like, hey, what if we change it? Like we're not doing that. Um, and, and because you are so segmented into your roles, you have a lot of power in a very thin slice. Right. So. Uh, and, and you can comment on the design, and, and, I, and I don't mean to say that you don't have input in different ways, but as a whole, your creative control exists only in your small circle. So a lot of people enter this industry and they think like, oh, I'm going to make a game. Well, actually, you're just making stuff for a game. Like, I modeled all of the tin cans in Bioshock. Okay, awesome. Well, probably not the, the guy that modeled those tin cans. When I was graduating, there was a buddy of mine got a job at EA down in Florida. I don't know if they're still open down there, but he was doing the squirrel animation for Tiger Woods Golf. And so, like, you know, at first it was like, hey, I get this job, I take it on. And you're like, oh man, that's awesome. Uh, and then, like, two years later, it's like the worst job ever. You know, it's like it's like the Sony QA show. You might see that, it's just like, uh, you can compete in this show. 20 of you reality show stars will win a chance to play QA star. Right? QA is the shittiest job, especially if you've done it. You play the same game a hundred times a day for a year, uh, but it's like, hey, it's a rock star thing, you know. Uh, and so it's kind of that that perception that you need to make sure that you have. Uh, so development by committee, right? If you try to do anything, you'll see that working in a storyboard team or whatever it is. It gets that much harder when people have a voice, right? Um, and that's a good and a bad thing. Like people are like, we want your creativity, and then like a year and a half into the project, it's like, please don't even talk. Uh, <laughs> And so sometimes that can be stifling for people. Uh, perks often have the dirt. That's the Pepsi, free Pepsi, free cereal. Like, look, if your job, <laughs> I don't know, it's like some people don't give you free Pepsi, maybe that's because they don't need to. Uh, but often those perks have, have a purpose. Right? It's not always negative. They want you to be happy and they want you to be there working. Uh, security often lasts until the end of the production. Uh, crunch, you know, the, the hidden toe is just part of the industry. Normally means it's just crafting management or design. Um, but it happens, right? And the reason for failure often can be you can't control, right? You could do, like I say, your job fantastically. Oh, sorry, uh, we don't have a uh, new quarter we talked to show this quarter, so you and your 15 votes are going to go. So, uh, input right into the system, right? There's, there's a huge investment of money uh, and talent into the studios and why. Uh, because it's their job, right, to minimize risk and maximize profit. Uh, so what you have is the output is these highly polished experiences uh, that feel kind of familiar, right? Uh, I can remember when Halo 2 came out, you know, it was like, my friends and I, for Halo 1, we used to have these LAN kind of game today, I guess. We used to have these, like, LAN parties where everyone would bring, like, their consoles over, and it was, like, before you had flat TVs, and you had to carry this giant-ass tube TV. Um, so we would play all the time, and my friends did. We waited, it was like two and a half years for Halo 2 to come out. And you know, it was like everyone like for a week playing this thing. We had snacks, we had everything, we waited for a midnight launch. Uh, you know, everyone like got fat, we opened our games. Uh, and it was like probably within an hour and a half, everyone was like almost asleep. Because it was the same damn game with a sword, that was it. Um, you know, it was like, wait, we spent two years with all these people and all you could bring was this, you know, the sword was cool, but it wasn't enough to sustain it. Like it wasn't enough to feel, to, to feel fresh, but there's a reason for this, and that's because it's very difficult to establish these ideas and very risky. And even then, once you bust your ass and all the money to get through this point, why, why would you want to start over? You know, it's like you did all this work, and now it's like, hey, just release two, and people are fine. It's like movies, right? Uh, if you nail the first one, you're guaranteed a second one. And if you kind of do that second well, that second well, bam, you know, truly. Uh, <laughs> without even a whole lot of effort. Um, so it's important for you to understand this because this is the world that actually exists behind the shininess. Right? Um, but what this does produce is some subject matter experts. And that means if you want to be an expert in your field, if you want to talk at GDC, if you really want to advance, if you really want to advance facial animation to the next level, this is where you need to be, right? Because the R&D money is there. Uh, the tools are there. There's enough people that carry the rest of the loads that you can spend time on that task. So this is really good for if skill development is your destination. Uh, 
right? AAA is really good at, if you want to leave work at the office, um, and granted you might be crunching, but it's way different than Indy where you carry that everywhere you go and you your life. Um, if you work best in a group environment, if you're not, like, you know, if you don't work very good individually, if you're not good at self-managing yourself, um, and if you can't, what I call can't sing, uh, or you're taking voice lessons, that means you don't really have anything to say yet. Like, uh, the whole point is right now, you have tons of open tools, uh, why aren't you making that game now? Like, you know, it's like I ask people all the time, like, oh, I want to be a game developer. Okay, what'd you make? Well, I didn't go to school yet. You don't have to go to school to make a game, it's a game. Like, grab some dice and then, you know, you play the board game, it's super easy. Um, but they're like, I don't know, I just don't feel inspired. It's normally bullshit behind it. Um, if you want to make games, you're making games. Like, you make games, you know, on your off time. You make games when you're thinking of playing with your kids. Like, you're, I'm, I'm terrible at that. Like, you know, kids will start playing with a dumb game. And I'll be like, oh, what if we change these rules? Uh, and then we put this over here. And then we grab the Star Wars guys and then we, um, you know, because you think that way. You're a game developer. You're constantly thinking, like, how do I entertain people? But if, if you're not doing that now, it's not because you're, you know, man, you're talented. It's just maybe they don't know what you want to say yet, which is fine. Uh, and any art is the same way. Like, if you don't know what you want to say yet, it's cool. Then then go somewhere where you can learn what that is. It could be like, you just get disgruntled and that creates your voice. Um, you know, you work somewhere and it's like, that is definitely how I don't want to learn how to sing. Right? Um, and if you have loans and you need to pay bills, that's a good way to go. Uh, okay, so the indie mode. Uh, this is my basement. This is where I work. Um, and I love it. Uh, I worked in, in the studio, in the current studio, we have five years. Cubicles, I think it was beige, was the color brown on the wall. Um, and so this is my studio. I have a bookshelf, a couch, and, and my desk. And, and this is where I live. And I live. Um, so independent studio. You know, this isn't this isn't all me where you, know, you don't need your style or whatever. People are making money doing this. But they're making money because they're being innovative and, and they're really putting their passion into what they do. Um, here's just some some of those uh, those titles. The book by guys are here outside. Um, and, the, and then Iron is me. Uh, that's my studio. Uh, but these aren't just chump games, right? These aren't just like hey, we do some crap together. These are fantastic experiences. We fight in a small small teams. If you haven't played these games, go get out of this presentation. Go download them right now because they're absolutely fantastic. And they will change the way that you think about playing like, games. When you play something like this and you get done and it's not like you feel like ripped off or cheated or you feel like you got a crap beat out of you, but you set down the controller or the keyboard or whatever you're using and you walk away and you're still thinking about that. Um, you know, just that, that, that is the experience that you're trying to create. It's entertainment, right? That's our job is to make something that entertains people, not that then, like, a, I don't know, beats the crap out of them or. Uh, you know, continually shows them the same picture, but hey, this is higher fidelity. Look at this one. Um, it's really a new experience, and, and it's the way I think about it is like this: you walk into Borders or, or Barnes and Noble or whatever. There's not like five books that you're looking at. You know, it's not like hey, this shelf is five books, and then go to the next shelf. This is the same book with a new cover, um, right? Imagine that for games. Like that's what the future is going to be. Games are going to replace those things, you know, in the mainstream. It will be like, hey, I want uh, some military history game. Okay, I'll go back to the shelf 52 or whatever. Um, think of it like that. What is the interest to you? Um, and, and, and really put your passion there. Uh, corporate oversight, there is none, uh, which is good and bad. Like, you don't have oversight from that money coming in, uh, but you can kind of, you know, do that money. Uh, so, technically, it's your own personal. Your, your conscious takes over this role. Uh, so input, uh, it's a lot more, I guess, fluid and flexible, right? Anybody can make a game. Um, passion, dreams, pocket change, so it's normally what you have left. Um, but your goal is innovative gameplay experience, right? Which, you know, and there's some people that, you know, that really focus on the real aesthetic, but, like when you played uh, like Walking Melee, you might play that. Um, just came out recently. It's a blast to play, um, and it has a fantastic idea about it. <coughs> um, the output of this, right? Personal experiences that build new fresh with less visual development. So the byproduct of this, and, and what you really need to think about is, is just like what was brought up the last panel, should I be an expert or should I be a generalist? 
what really depends on what you want to do, right? If you're going into AAA, you better expect to be an expert because there's a bunch of experts in line that have spent whatever two years in ZBrush. Their cartridges look awesome. Um, if you want to make games, and, and this was the big change for me, like the school I went to, I went to Virginia, um, and it was a film degree when I graduated. So you had a lot of traditional experiences with sculpture and with drawing. And, you know, I'm going to conflict with that panel said before. Like you need to have traditional skills. The tools today they're going to change, right? They change all the time. But if you're a creative person, you know ZBrush is no different than sculpting. It's just you don't have to wait for the clay to dry. Right? You don't have to make the armature underneath it. You don't have to sit there with a hair dryer for two hours to get that to dry. Right? You just open it up and schedule it and put it in there. But what happens is you see in the industry, and I've seen this time and time again, is that you'll get a job, like you'll get jobs with these tools, you'll come out of them. Um, but what happens is you get to the mid-level, that's going to be where you peak. Because the guys who are creative and they think outside the box, and they have those traditional skills. It doesn't matter what they're in, whether they're that game changes to Barbie Princess or you know whatever you're working on next. It's like those guys can instantly put those skills down and sketch out a character design in, in a Japanese style because they've taken art history classes. And the perfect example that you can use for this is you ask, look at what people in the industry are doing in their off time. Are they going home and doing ZBrush? Hell no. They're taking figure drawing classes. They're taking painting classes because they understand like, man, I really need to understand this color. So, you know, yes, game programs are important, but you've got to learn the fundamentals for your craft, right? Because that is what's going to help you, you know, what I call is visual language, right? It's going to help you be able to communicate what's in your brain to the other 20 people on your team, right? It's going to say, here's the art style that I want, and here's how you're going to pull it off. But we've never seen that before. I know that's the whole idea, right? But that doesn't come from uh, technical manuals or you know, uh, I keep using ZBrush because that seems to be a, a popular thing these days. Look, in five years, ZBrush is going to be gone, or it's going to look totally different. Um, but those traditional skills, right, they're, they're, they're there. So if you're getting into the indie world, you need to be a generalist. Um, because that's just the way it works. You're going to be programming, you're going to be doing talks, you're going to be producing, you're going to be marketing, you're going to be doing everything. And, and you are going to be a generalist. Uh, so positive. You can work from anywhere, right? A, a laptop and coffee shop. Uh, you have full creative control, no oversight. You don't have to wear pants if you don't want to. Uh, that directly relates to number one. Make sure that it's associated with your location. Um, wide range of disciplines. You, you get your hands dirty. You know, so it's like you can, if you want to try programming, try it. You know, it's like if you want to do the design, try it. It's your game. Um, you might find something that you're actually really good at. Uh, individual recognition, if you're into that, it's like, hey, I made this, this is all me, or this is the five of us. Um, community support, there's a lot of community right now in the world. Don't get lost in it, like, uh, don't dress like not, just right on the ears and all that crap. I saw that at GDC, don't, don't get caught up in the scene, right? Get caught up in the network and the resources that are there, uh, and what they have to say, because there's some good stuff going on. And then you can follow your passion. Negative, again, high stress. This is not a stressful job. Uh, I'm more stressed out now, but it's it's a different kind of stress because it's about my creative struggles, right? So if I'm working on a combat design or whatever it is at the time, I'm really trying to work within myself because I want to try to you know kind of solve my own problems and come up with something awesome. And you can't do that. It's very stressful to yourself, but it's a different kind of stress than like somebody breathing down my neck saying I got to do 55 characters in the next. Uh, you can be in the same market as AAA, um, develop time split with admin, you have different tasks that you can do, and limited vis visibility. It's really hard to get eyes on your game. You can work on it really hard for two years, post it, and it disappears the next day. And that's, you know, the number one fear that we have is that nobody plays our game. Right? Or maybe they take a second. Uh, might be a worse fear. Uh, so it's a good option if uh, you're a lone wolf, right? Um, but these are important because you need to look at yourself and say, do I have these skills? Uh, it's not just, hey, anyone can make an indie game. It takes a lot more than you think. Uh, so when I talk about success, you really need to make sure that you're picking the right path for your skills and really what you're passionate about. Uh, so know your destination, know your route, and navigate it smartly. So really quick, here's my tips or stuff you need to know. Uh, okay, everyone knows, does anyone know the saying goes with? 
It's about getting the right fit, right? Know your studio before you get there. Don't, don't just be snowballed like, hey, we want to bring you in for an interview. It's like, oh my gosh, this guy is so great. No. There's three things you need to pay attention to. You need to pay attention to the leadership that's there, right? Uh, how is that leadership set up at that studio? The talent, whether the talent is there once you get in the door, that's going to teach you to get into the next step. And number three is your peers, right? Pay attention to who's there. Those are the guys you're going to be hanging out with. Right? You're going to be there until midnight. So make sure there's not a bunch of old, old people there and you know all the time. But this is important because this is when you get in the door. So if you make the wrong decision when you get in the door, that could be your five years right there that you're punching out because you didn't pay attention and really investigate. If you're good and you're passionate about what you do, you'll find the job. Uh, but make sure that that's the right fit for you, right? Make sure that you're interviewing with those people. Uh, make sure it's not just them pounding you with questions. You're pounding them with questions. But how do I know you're going to leave the studio to where we you don't have to right here? Um, just be careful. Um, two, be confident, right? Uh, you got to know your job to be good at it. Right, let's do something for the CMAs. Um, I just said nothing. Uh, number three, be efficient. Right? This is the most important thing you can learn from this talk. Uh, your job is to be efficient at what you do, and it will make a difference of where you stay, stay in this industry or not. Um, this means tracking your time, estimating your time, estimate what you're doing before you do it. See how long it takes you, because this is the pressure that comes on you. Like when you really get down to the wire, oh, I gotta do five more models, or oh, I need to code this system in a week. And you do it in a week, and you know you can do it in a week, you sleep a lot better, right? Because you know what your skills are. So I'm going to talk tomorrow, and it's about tools, and I'll go over some of these uh, in the workshop. But find something to track your time. Work when you're at work, like you surfing. You know, it's like you want to go home. You want to go home at five. If you're efficient, you can get your work done, and, and the people who are screwing off and stay there. Uh, but it's not about how many hours you put in, and about how much crunch you do. It's about how efficient you do. Um, and this will make a difference of where you're successful. Uh, number four, stay hungry. It's not your chair, right? Don't let your ass get comfortable in that chair because it's not yours. If, if you do not stay hungry and you let your skills atrophy, they will find someone else to that chair. There's 20 other people that want to sit in your chair. This is the company's chair. Make sure that you stay hungry, right? So that that's your chair. Uh, but never forget that, right? Uh, attitude counts double, I don't know if there's any words to do um, don't, don't be a whiner and a that's a, the quickest way that you're going to end your career. And, and like the guy said earlier, it's a very, very small network. The people that you work with, you know other people in the studio, you will travel fast in the type of work that you do, the type of person you are. So uh, this is, a, look it up online, Ben Revere, like, I think it was like last week, it, it was games from the Red the Phillies. Uh, he's a center fielder for the Phillies. It's like, I don't think it's like bottom of the second, I was worn out. He makes a ridiculous catch. And not only does he make a ridiculous catch, but then he gets up and he throws out the runner at first base. And, and the important thing to know, it's not about the team like saying, hey, good job. Uh, it's the other guys in the respect that you can see on their faces like, damn, that guy just hustled. Um, so just know that when your reputation is on the line, that's the time to hustle, right? So you want to be known for your work and what you do in your work ethic. Nothing gets you more success where you are than really working hard. Uh, and that doesn't mean crunch it out. It doesn't mean work, you know, 300 times an hour that you're supposed to at a time. It just means pick the right time. And when, it, when you do, go for it. Uh, sleep with one eye open. Know the numbers. Know the metacritics. Know how many hires they're doing. Know how many layoffs they're doing. Uh, is the talent leaving the studio? Keep your eyes open. Even if you're enjoying where you're working, there's other things that go on that you can be aware of. Uh, and they can help you make the right change. Uh, keep your reels updated. When you ship a game, all those assets for the reel, for your reel that you worked on, they disappear, they go to another server. So back up your work, right? You, want, you may be two years down the line and you decide, oh, I want to go work at Blizzard or whatever. Um, those things disappear, right? And so keep those always, keep your reel updated. You never know when opportunity is going to knock. Um, okay, now some tips for a you survive. Know your scope, right? This doesn't mean have good breath, you probably have good breath. They don't have to do the report. Um, scope is the number one reason why indies fail, right? And this is the size of the project. Make sure that you scope your project well. Don't make the game that you want to make. Make the game that you can make with the resources that you have, right? Uh, 
right? Uh, a lot of people get into this industry and they're like, oh, I'm going to make the greatest fantastic thing ever. Like, okay, and you'll be out of money, and you'll be back in whatever you were doing in a very short period of time. You don't have a game until someone can play it, right? Uh, it's not a story, it's not a character design, it's nothing until someone can sit and play your game. And that's how you know it's a game, right? That's the definition of how you sit down and play it. Don't get lost, especially if you are in the game, you're working on your own project. Don't get lost in your passion. You're like, oh, these character designs are fantastic. Okay, well, great. It took you six months. Where's the rest of the game? Can I play this game? No. You need to play it. You need to iterate it because it's going to change a lot. You don't have a game play. Network. There's a purpose of these type of events, right? Get business cards, pass them out. Uh, the importance of your network is huge as a need because you can learn how to do overnight, right? It's like if you need to do some server programming, uh, like I can call Aaron, who lives down the street, and say, hey, come over here, I will give you a case of beer. We've got to solve this problem now. Um, and, and, and build this often, right? These are the people that here's that you have will go to all these different studios. Uh, build your, your network spiders and grows the longer you're um, But start building this early because when you need it, when it's your Kickstarter you're trying to fund, don't be trying to build your network in because it'll be too late, and that'll be the point where you're probably in the heaviest production. Build into a team. Be careful starting with a team, right? It costs money and people's time. And even then, you don't know what the passions will be of everyone else. So build into your team. Build the team if you need it. Um, and if your network is good and your game is good, you'll have no problem finding talent. You'll be the right kind of talent. So just be careful when you're getting into the team projects. Uh, again, with the efficiency thing. It's even more as an indie. Like you will, You'll have so many roles that you have to cover, it will make your head spin. So you need to make sure that you are efficient and that you're organizing things. So that when it's time to program, you can sit down and program. When it's time to do art, you can sit down and art and not like, oh, wait, how did I do that texture in ZBrush? Um, you don't have time for that. You need to be super organized, or business will disappear. If you'll work past, you may have a model that says, hey, let's have lunch next week. Um, and you forget it, and you just lost that model. So you're going to have to be super organized. Marketing is important to game design. Right? Don't blow up your social media network if you have a shitty game. Uh, so plan that from the beginning, right? Plan your marketing plan so that people actually get a scene for the game. And then don't give up, right? Don't give up. It will suck. You will go through so many times where you think your game is crap until somebody plays it rather than looking at it for two years and you're like, that's the best game ever. Uh, but if you give up and you quit, it doesn't matter if you have to go get work in the dentist's office or whatever. Get that game done. Game developers ship, hobbyists play around. Uh, so make sure that you're getting your product done and getting it done. Um, so success is arriving at that destination, right? That's how you know when you arrive. You have a direction. You knew you were about to get there. You did it, right? You navigated this part and you followed it through until you arrive at that new direction. And that is what success is about. Right? I know where I'm going. I worked my ass off and now I'm here. And it's still pretty good. Um, but know that it's going to change, like, right after you get there, you're going to come to um, And then don't forget about the journey, right? The, the cool shit is what happens in the middle. It is working those late hours. It is that effort that you put into it. That's going to make all the difference when you get the project done and you win the idea. Uh, or, you know, you get those things that you're saying you're going to in my life. Uh, and, and that's what we're going to work So, take that into stride and, uh, Thank you.